Today is a very big day. Your girl is learning how to paint cars, and I mean really paint them the right, proper way, and I am so excited to officially announce that we have partnered with House of Color here at the compound. They're actually here right now setting up the official House of Color bank Yes, an entire paint bank. I've used their paint for many years. It was actually the very first paint that I ever sprayed a car with on my three rotor car. I used it on the engine bay for that car and Sailor 7. They actually have the ultimate shade of neon yellow, part of their neon line called Chartreuse. I've used that color on many car parts, on many car wheels, and I'm just so excited that we have officially partnered with them. I'm gonna be learning with the go-to guy, the guy that knows everything about House of Color and painting cars, and that is Mike Taylor from House of Color. He is their in-house painter, formulator. He's going to be training me personally today, and we're going to be painting my Corvette. Now the paint job that I decided on for the Corvette is probably just about the hardest paint job I could try and do and try to learn with, but we're gonna roll with it. I'm gonna force myself to learn as fast as I can and we'll see what happens. But we're gonna go check on them right now. They're setting up the bank and we're gonna give you some painting 101 basics and take you through some of the process. Wish me luck. The bank is actually being set up in the mixing room of the paint booth. We got all the product on the floor right over there. We're gonna be organizing and going through that. But before we get to the bank, we gotta make a quick stop into the prep room. Now, another company that we have partnered with is USC, also known as US Chemical. They are a partner of House of Colors. And if you are familiar with anything automotive, bodywork related, you know these guys. I mean, they make every single thing that you need in the body prep process from razors to every grit sandpaper for every application, whether it's by hand or by like a power tool. They make all the Bondo, Glaze, anything that you could possibly need. They make all like the spray primers as well in aerosol cans. We have everything here to do everything that we need to do, which is amazing. Like we are setting up this facility to be able to carry out any type of job and be 100% prepared. We actually aren't fully on loading the pallets that showed up from USC, but they are a big, big partner for the compound now for our paint process. And this is gonna be so huge, you guys. Like there are so many cars that need to be painted, need to be prepped, even just car parts. And now we have everything A to Z to get any job done with the best materials and the best product. Having a complete full house of color bank right here on the compound is just wild.
Go paint something. It's official. Let's go. Wait. Uh, no, Chris. Straight. Let's make it artistic. I know it's gonna be hard for you, but just try and be straight for one. I tried again. Er, come on, you need to make it. Wait, yeah, right there. It's going in. Yep, yeah, send it. Oh, there we go. That's straight. So we are going to stock the bank now, and we're going to be doing it by order of numbers. Get this thing loaded, and I'm gonna start learning how to use this and understand all the different formulations and calculations to get any color you wanna make within the House of Color line. So, keeping these in order, S2O2 would go right in between S2O1 and S2O3. Now, sort of using this as a shelf until our paints are actually open. So what this bank is, basically an agitator. So it is really, really cool. And just by pressing this button here, when it turns on, it actually mixes the paints with, let me find our special cap so I can show you. This right here is what makes this bank so special. So after you've already opened up one of your quartz and you wanna put it back on the shelf, you don't want it to go bad, you wanna keep it agitated. So you put this special top on, this top, ooh, I'm still learning guys, bear with me. <laughs> this top goes into our bank and when you press on, this runs inside of our paint, keeping everything moving and agitated so that your paints don't go bad. Like this is such an awesome system to have. Because what will happen is after you crack this open, it'll start to settle, um, possibly like harden up and you just, you don't want that. So you put this cap on and this whole bank has room to do that on all of these shelves right here. But until I actually open things up, I'm just going to be using it more as a shelf and then start using our special tops when we need it. This is so cool. Now let's load this thing up. We're still waiting for some stuff to get in, but yes, the neons are gonna have their own section. All of our effects mixes are on this shelf, so these are like the smaller ones. That depending on what color or mixture you're going for, you would usually pour this into an effects carrier. And the extra shelf is mostly gonna be for all of our candies. So you can see this, I put some candies at the end, but we have so much more candy paint that we need a whole area for. But for now, I put some in that corner. And then I was just organizing everything again by number. So this is the S2 line and it's going from one all the way to here. And S2 stops at S2 18 in order. Then we have an S2 26. Moving on to the SG line. So these are more of their fully solid colors. I believe SG stands for solid graphite. These are the more solid colors right here. Towards the bottom, we have more of our catalyst, our hardener. This is a big thing of our effects carrier base, and then our surface sealers. Now, we're gonna talk more to Mike about why you would choose different colors for what application. Here, we have a white, a yellow, and a blue. Then we have some of the KD line, which is like their primer, and then we have everything from black, gray, and even this red. And I believe floating around somewhere we also have white. Our bank is officially locked and loaded. What do you think? 
pretty crazy. All organized and so beautiful. Cool. I love the red. Can you guess my favorite section? Look closely at the second shelf. Ah, neons. Yay. Love that. They're, they have their own special area. <laughs> I just realized that I haven't showed you guys the Corvette yet. It is 100% prepped and ready for paint. Now it looks a little funky, all right, let, let me explain. I didn't fully install these pieces or the halo piece because I think I actually wanna paint underneath where these would be sitting. So see how these sit right here? I wanna make sure we paint that before we put them on. So these pieces we're gonna be painting completely off of the car. And then in order to really make sure we get in all the nooks and crannies, having this fully exposed is a great way to do that. We pop the top off as well, just to make sure we get the paint absolutely everywhere that it needs to be. You'll see both of the front fenders are not fully installed. They're pulled up and propped forward again so that we can fill in these gaps and get absolutely everything that we need to paint painted. Same idea with the hood. You know, we have it propped up so that we can get underneath, get all the edges. And again, this fender is out as well. Now, I know a lot of people paint cars with the body panels fully off, like our front bumper is suspended, but I'm doing a wild fade, like a wicked, wicked fade, and it's gonna be really hard to keep up with everything on the panels if they're off the car, and then fully assemble it and just hope that it's perfect when you put it back on and the fade completely melts into the different colors. So, this is kind of what we rigged up so that it's simulating the car completely assembled so we can really get a good fade going. And I know, I feel crazy. I'm gonna be learning how to paint. Doing a really complex paint job, full fade, you guys. There's gonna be about like five, six colors. We'll see how crazy we wanna get, um, but it's gonna be wild. That is why the car looks a little funky. And yes, as you can tell, from the hood, I decided to paint the hood, but leave the vents exposed carbon. We'll also have a little bit of exposed carbon, like striped up here. Since I'm gonna do such a wild paint job, it's gonna be a crazy fade. I didn't wanna have like a big carbon fiber only hood sort of breaking up that fade. I'd rather have it continue onto the hood. And I think it's just gonna make the paint job look that much more dramatic. <laughs> A bunch of stuff. I had a little painting school. Really just to understand the basics. We just wanted to kind of recap some of that knowledge to you guys because I know I learned a lot. And should we just start with primer? Yeah, concealer, that's the that's coat? the base of everything, the yeah. foundation, right? And you want a nice, solid, strong foundation. So like I was telling you, we have the KD3000 series. We have six primary colors, gray, black, white, yellow, red, and blue. And what's cool about this system, it's a three-in-one, it's a high build, a medium build, and a sealer. Again, one product that you can do all three things with. Because normally if it was just metal, you would have to like seal it with an epoxy Correct. coating first, and then another layer, and, and then the primer, but this is like everything in one. Right, the epoxy for bite, strength, right? And then the, the, the poly to give some flexibility, some build. So this is again a hybrid direct to substrate. So fiberglass, bare metal, galvanized, things of that nature. Most plastics, and like I was telling you earlier, anything that's TPO below the belt line on your vehicle, you still want to put that adhesion promoter because yeah. those are really flexible. But this will bond to that, giving you that flexibility so your paint doesn't start flaking off. So what's cool about this as well is, hey, if I want to mix it up as a high build, I'm just doing it four parts my primer, one part my catalyst. But hey, if I'm ready, you know what, the stuff's sanded with like 180, I can mix it as a medium build. I just add another 
one part reducer. So it's got a lot of flexibility in what you can do with it. So now I'm just using one product and buying two. Yeah. So it just makes it very convenient. What my favorite part of this is, is, is with this product as well, is you can intermix these to create a ground coat color, which I was telling you earlier. Yes, I love these. I love that they have this chart too, yes. to spray out and test for your different primer. And if you want to mix, these are the base colors, right? Right. So the primer the is available in, the in these, but then you can, get all these other colors with those primary colors and the recipe to get that color for your primer is right on the back. But you can take this whole sheet and like take your color and spray the sheet yep. and see how it's gonna lay over your base primer and whatever color that is. So I, this is one of my new favorite things. Oh yeah, and it's sheet. fantastic because I'll tell you what, I use these all the time creating colors. Like yeah. I'll mix any of these colors up and I go, okay, well what ground coat does it look good under? So for example, I'll spray this color here, boom, spray it over that, I get 48 variations of that particular color. Yeah, They're great for ones. filing. Yeah, you keep it later, so yeah. then if you go back to the pink, like I wanna use this and spray a pink that we make on it, right. and just see, oh, how does the pink look over light pink, over darker pink, over the red, over just the white, maybe right. the yellow, like you get so many different variants in that color to then ultimately like pick the exact shade that you want. So. And it even goes a step further. You're not limited to this just this chart. Yeah. You can create and intermix whatever you want. We're just giving some standards here. Again, it's by parts. Also on our website, we have this broken down into a scale formula, so you're always accurate. Yeah. So these work fantastic. So I think we sell these in packs. They're very cheap, they're very convenient, but again, it's a great tool of not having to mix and mix and mix and just do little simple spray outs. This gives you a variety of color in one simple sheet depending on what your substrate is, you know, if it has body work and you have, you know, some Bondo here or some putty here, you're going to want to use something a higher build so you can get those deeper sand scratches covered. So you yeah. can sand that with something finer and then normally you'd mix it up as a sealer and then you're ready for your color. What's nice about this is that the medium and the sealer, I can hit that with 600 grit and I'm ready to apply my color. Now, when I say high build, I mean it'll cover safely 120 grit it will cover 80 but there's nobody in their right mind that wants to start painting at 80 yeah. but when i say high build a lot of people today think polyester primer that's a totally different animal we do have a polyester primer it's the sp1600 that is built for that purpose this is a standard high build primer so i don't want to confuse people when i say high build it's just your standard high build primer it will do one mil per coat so it's a nice high build primer, but there's some people that ask me when I do clinics, oh Mike, is it polyester? Like polyester, no, we have a separate animal for that. And for painting my Corvette, we are going to use the white primer to get a really nice white base. Now what's nice about this too, is you have a window, and this is a lot of questions that I get with this, this primer, you know, the things we're rolling over right now, but what is my window of coat time? So we don't want you to let this sit longer than four hours before we'd want you to scuff it. Because what'll happen is I call it a shell time. So it'll start to kind of glaze over and that's when you don't get the tooth or the bite. So it's always good, hey, if, if I know that I'm gonna come back next day, all right, then just give a, a gray or red scotch bright. Just let the scotch bright do its thing and then you can apply your paint over that. But you the wanna scuff day. it. Yeah, the next day. Or, you know, if it's after that four hour window, you know, if you're four hours and 22 minutes, it's not gonna make that difference. Mm -hmm. But if you have to let it sit overnight or elapsed time, you want to give it a scuff and then you can apply your color. You don't have to reseal it. Just give it a quick scuff, wipe it down with a cleaner and you're ready to go. So that's what we're going to be doing. So today in this video, we're not going to reveal how we're painting my Corvette just yet. I already told him it's going to be a crazy fade that I'm crazy for choosing like the hardest type of paint <laughs> job to try and attempt yeah, the we first time you. I'm properly. We blame you for this one. You're the one that made the, the spray out. I he try to talk to you out of this. He sends me this amazing spray out sample. And I'm like, I have to do that for the car. Because I thought she wanted brown and orange and green, yeah. but she just you didn't fall for that. Long. All the neons. Yeah. All the neons. Yeah. Uh, so today we're actually only going to be spraying the primer. So we'll go through that process. We'll spray the car. You'll right. be teaching me how to do that properly. Um, and then in the next video, we'll actually be applying our color down. And then here's another tip since we kind of let it out of the bag that we are doing neon. You know, neons are a color that we really do not recommend on overall projects. Yeah. Colette knows that, hey, this is more expedition type vehicle, so she's not worried about the, the fading of it. Neons do fade. But if you are doing a neon on some of your projects, there are ways to make them last. So if you take our base coat white and you take the neon that you're gonna use, 
and you add some of the neon to your white base before right. you do the base color, that will help the neon fade into itself. So it will keep the longevity of that. that now you don't really do it with the sealer, you will do it with the white base coat, the S226 okay. white, bright white. Okay. So cool little tips on that, but we're gonna go ahead and just do the sealer on this because it's gonna make our project a little quicker. Plus, we're doing a little more than just spraying a single color. Yes, we're spraying all of the colors. Right, we're doing a whole spectrum. Neon rainbow. Yes, it's very exciting. Y'all are confusing uh, people right now, okay? Yeah. They're not ready. Right. They're not ready. I don't right. know if I'm ready. Yeah. Well, she's ready. <laughs> Whether she likes it or not, she is ready. Hopefully, hopefully I'm going to be ready. Yeah. How to figure out your formula. So now we have an entire bank in there. Mm -hmm. So in theory, we should be able to make all of these variations yeah. of colors, like everything in both of these books. We have our standard candy base coats and our regular base coats as well. And I wanted you to talk a little bit about reading like the formulas on the it. back, because this you is a lot it. easier sure. than it seems. Yeah, it's extremely easy. And we're gonna start off with the PG-1, which in my opinion is the easiest one. So what the PG-1 is, is the standard base coat. So the standard base coat consists of two components and it's sprayed literally over one of these standard primer colors. Yep. And most of them are gonna be over gray or white or black. A couple of them will have yellow or blue uh, and maybe even the red. So we have a combination. Nothing is intermixed. Everything is gonna be one of the standards. So what it is, is you see the multiple colors here. All of them are named, but on the back of the color that you choose, for example, House of Blues, it's gonna give me the combination. HOK 0402-00. The 00 represents the primer. So in this case, 00 is gonna be gray. KD 3000, so that's the gray. So we already know right there, my ground coat is gray. How I make that color, House of Blues, how I make that color is the two components. S204, which is the carrier base, and that's gonna be strato blue. The S2 stands for shimmering two. The second two digits right here, the S2-FX02, that's a half pint of the fine metallic. So for example here, this is not the two components of that particular color, but this is an example. This is a three quarter full quart. This is the effect. All I have to do, if I want the full quart, is I shake this up by hand, I literally dump this whole thing into that three quarter full quart and that would make the color. It's that simple. And like he said, it tells you the base primer, the color that you would have for your first coat. Right, and again, I gave you guys a standard, but be creative. Take that color, spray it over this color check card, gives you 48 variations. Maybe it looks better over the Robin's Egg Blue style. Maybe it looks a little better. You want it a little greener. Maybe it looks good over one of the greens. So you can be creative. With the carrier base and the effect, you can now create that one color of strato blue, 35 different ways because we offer 35 different effects. It's a small compact system, which you saw in your bank, that you yeah. can create thousands and thousands of colors with. I have, we have all that. the colors, we have all of them. Yeah. All the colors right here. Now also, you can do a small amount, right? You don't have to do this full quart. If I just wanted a small amount of four ounces, I do three ounces of this, mm -hmm. one ounce of this, there it is. I didn't waste this carrier base nor this effect and I can use these for different colors down the road. Mm -hmm. So it's a really big advantage for people that are do-it-yourselfers and for people that don't want to buy a full quart. Yeah. But now they're building their own mixed bank. Maybe they don't have a mixed bank but they've got a mixed shelf. So it's really creative because now you as the end user or just a guy that does this on their own, I call them second shifters, build a bank because most of us custom painters we build our mix bank by the stuff we buy yeah and then we start intermixing stuff yeah. so this creates that for you so this still gives you that pearl base coat look it gives you a candyish appearance because we've ground down these carrier bases twice as much as our original line mm -hmm. you know that's why people go mike oh i really like the old factory pack stuff and i said well they're nice they're great but they're a little dated this gives you so much more option and a lot of clarity yeah. And they allow you to have freedom to be a custom painter. Where our old stuff gave you all these cool tools, but they kind of limited you to what you could do. Where this gives you limitless options, which is fantastic. Yeah. And, and it, it gets you excited to be a custom painter. This just gets you into custom painting to where you mm -hmm. can really feel comfortable with painting and painting a custom color. Because again, with separating the carrier base and the effect, we're taking away a step of those old dry pearls. Remember those old dry pearls that you buy 
and you have I powder still, pearls. I still have I know them. you do. I, I saw still them. Have That's why them. I was bringing that up to you. <laughs> it's the one where I would be like dusting it on. Yeah, because it's I would all also, over the place. Right. You would not. You would not approve of ways that I also, use them with like. You blew on it too. I, I would like salt bay. I'd put right, some. I saw hand. you putting it underneath your eyelid there. <laughs> no, or maybe not. You know, just carry some in the purse. So thought about it. This allows you to take away that third step of spraying a base. Spraying that pearl in inner coat type clear, mm -hmm. spraying that over, and then clearing. You're actually putting that pearl into your tint. So you just yeah. eliminated that whole step. So now it's saving you time and money. Yeah. So it's fantastic. If you want to check out what pearls look like, the effects packs, page 43 through 47 shows you what each group of effects look like over black. So you can actually get a, a good idea of what each effect will look like before you start throwing into these carrier bases and start wasting your you know material you know don't be afraid to intermix do what you want to do intermix these but our standard is just three parts carrier base one part effect if you do get confused when you buy the pocket guide I break it down really simple here it's highlighted yeah. the first two digits represent the carrier base this is always a three-quarter full court second two digits always represent the half pint the last two digits, the dash, represents the primer color, which we represent right down here. Once you mix that up, you just reduce it two parts your color, one part reducer. So we give you the decoder right here. You want to graduate yeah. now if you to the next step level. Up, <laughs> here we go. All right, here's our, our candy base code. So it's a little bit more complicated, but still like, broken down, very easy to follow along and figure yeah. out. Here's our next level. Here's the next level. <laughs> and this one does seem a little bit more difficult, but once you wrap your head around it, ah, sometimes the light bulb just kind of clicks on. What sets me apart from the next painter? So if you're not familiar with true candies what a true candy is is normally you would spray a metallic type base whether it be silver a purple metallic a purple a pink metallic a blue metallic and you would spray basically a tinted clear over that and when the sun hits that tinted color it reflects through that metallic reverses and you're getting that depth like a swimming pool we call it oh the mm -hmm. water depth so that's kind of what this is but it's a base coat version so you can work with it fast you could touch it you could tape on it a lot of custom painters use it because it's more efficient candy base coats are like the future uh, because you can get it so close to looking like a true candy if you do it the right way that Nine out of 10 people really don't know the difference. That's what I did with the PG2. Eight to one, that's our standard mix. Eight parts, your base, S200, that's what you wanna use. And the reason why you wanna use this, most people on the field always use a product called SG100. It's been a product we've had in our line forever. It's called Interco Clear, but that's built to protect artwork, to protect face coat. Like we were talking earlier, hey, I wanna leave for a day or a week or a month and I have to scuff it. Well, why do I, I don't really want to scuff my metallic because if I scuff my metallic, I'm going to see those scratches, right? Mm -hmm. So the inner coat clear, I spray a coat or two of that on that. It protects that metallic so I can come back and I'm scuffing that. I'm building a bridge oh, between yeah. my color and then that. So then when I scuff that, all I'm scuffing is that clear base. Yeah. So most people just use that for everything. Oh, I can put my candy in that. I can suspend my flake in that. No, this suspends and orientates. And you'll see it when we open it up, it looks milky. But okay. well, that's by design because it suspends and orientates flakes, pearls, metallics, things to that. Where the SG100 is just what we call a bookmark. It's just to protect. All of these carrier bases start with this. So it's the heart of everything. Hmm. S200 trans nebulae because we're very hey. galactic. Hey, right? <laughs> uh, so the trans nebulae, eight parts every time. And I'm giving the layman's. We also have this again by gram weight on our, on our, even in our books and also on our website, to one part the candy concentrate. Eight to one, every mm -hmm. time, that doesn't change. What changes is the amount of the effect you put in. So our original mix, which is still on the website, that's why I'm bringing it up, is eight parts the trans nebulae, one part the candy concentrate, to a half a part of the effect. Looks great, but doesn't look fantastic. By the time you get to the third coat, the pearl starts floating to the top and the candy starts settling to the back. Well, I want the candy to look like candy. So what I did is I started lowering the amount of the effect. So instead of a half a part, a half a teaspoon, not a half a part, a half a teaspoon. By the time I do that third coat, it looks like a full on true candy job and the pearls just floating behind it. And when the sun hits it, all you see is that trickling of whatever pearls in there, but it just gives it depth. Oh, wow. So in the candy base coats, less is more. You're yeah. still gonna see it, but you're gonna have a true, beautiful candy. So the PGO2 is a less is more. 
So how this works, so everything that's on the right side may be either our silver sealer, like we were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. or it might be one of these standard carrier bases. So how, we, how do we know what it is? Well, this is how we decipher what this color is and what effect it is. Brandy wine is the candy, russet is the pearl. So everything on the right hand side is gonna be the sister part of that russic, but over black. We know everything is eight to one. The candy and this is always eight to one. So here's where things change. You're always gonna do less loading over black than you are over the light base. So what we did is you just flip it over. You go right to exactly where it is. And I made sure that this was black. So guys like myself, I keep everything Dick and Jane. Very, very simplified, very elementary. Dick and Jane? Yes, Dick and Jane. You don't remember reading those books in elementary school? Okay, so I'm dating myself. <laughs> so here we go. So the one that's over black, we're gonna look at it here. So it says S2008 parts. Now if we were gonna do it on our scale, it's gonna tell me 221.9 grams at this weight. The KK concentrate, one part is gonna equal the 24.6 grams. Here's where we get down to that very low increment of the effect. So it tells me I need the FX 23, it's gonna be either a half a teaspoon. If I wanna weigh it out, it's only four grams. So these little half pints are gonna go a long way. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's the beauty of that. So that's over black. So if I flip it over, it's gonna do the same loading of the trans nebulae and the KK concentrate, but all it does is, if you notice, it just doubled the effect. So over the light, it doubles the effect. Over the black, it's just half of what the, the light was. So four grams over the black, eight grams in that mix over light. Here, it tells me what primer. Okay, so for that right there, the Brandywine Rustic L2, and the L stands for light, and B stands for black. So now I know exactly what it is. So we go, okay, we know the primer is the red primer, so if we looked at our primer card, Boom. it's gonna be right there, KD 3004. Then we go right here to what the base color is, well guess what? That's sprayed directly over that primer. Oh, now if you go to the next one, it's gonna tell us a different base color. Yeah, right? so for base color, it's like none, because none. your your base color is essentially the red primer Correct. for that. And then you move on, you're like, okay, so now I need to mix So you my just candy mix part. your candy up yep. and you spray it right directly over that primer. There's a lot of cool tools that we've introduced that I don't think people still know that we have. So this yeah. is fantastic being with you, giving you some of the knowledge that we have. I know this is a lot of information, but I hope it's helpful to all you guys. I know it was for me. And I think really just understanding all the different options of primer, how that affects your final color that you get, and understanding how to go through these equations to, to get a specific effect and color. It's not hard. You just gotta take it step by step, figure out what your end goal is, and see how crazy you wanna get with it. And now we have the whole bank here at the compound. And my very first project is going to be the Corvette. It's gonna be a little bit different just because we are going to be using their neon line yes. for that. So it, it's a different approach. All of the neons are pre-made, pre -made, pre Right, they're the factory correct? packs. Correct. Yeah, so I think we have, I brought one over here. Yep, so this is paint. a little different. You you buy it, you order it, and this this is it for the color. Yeah, and, and again, just like you mentioned, we still have all of our factory pack colors. So if mm -hmm. you're not ready to jump into this intermix type system, carrier base of effect or eight one to half, creating your own candy, we still have all the factory pack stuff. So you oh. be more than happy to sell you any of our factory <laughs> packs so you can just reduce it and spray. Yeah. It's a great way to get involved in House of Color. We still have all those options. But for you guys and gals that want to create your own stuff, this is a fantastic option. There's no more satisfaction than creating a color and spraying it for your customer or for yourself and going, you know what, I did that and nobody else has that because you can literally create colors that nobody has. I think I need to find my go-to effect. Eventually, right. as I as I experiment and paint different things, I think I'll definitely end up having like a favorite one and then I want to get almost all the neons and try and mix yeah, different effects that. in I them. Think you're gonna be the queen <laughs> of neon. Yes, I need to find more things to paint, Chris. Now that we've gotten our painting 101, our house of color schooling, we're gonna go into the paint booth and apply our primer, let the car sit overnight, um, so we're waiting on some colors to get in, and then go for the full fade and full painting for the Corvette tomorrow. Putty. Putty on it. Well, thank you, Mike. You're welcome. Taking everybody to school now. That's right. <laughs> Girl, you ready?
Do I need to stretch? Do you stretch? Oh, yeah. Do you have like a, a stretching regimen that you go through before yeah. you get in the booth? Yeah. Before you suit up? That's like strapping yourself yes. into a race car. I'm putting my race suit on, you're putting your like suit on too, or both strapping in yeah. and trying to jump. <laughs> hey Jim. I do that exercise all the time. Oh. And this is Morgan from House of Color as well. We got Tom coming here tomorrow from House of Color. Chris, you're gonna learn too. No, I'm not. You better pay attention. You're gonna paint all my stuff. Okay, change of plan. We're not going to put primer on the entire car. Because we're painting the full thing tomorrow, we would then have to like rebuff and sand a little bit the entire car if we did that. So tonight, we're only going to spray white primer over the front bumper because the front bumper has never been painted, so it's all black. Uh, the side, like C7 look style pieces, we're going to put the primer on that as well because they're black as well. And then anywhere on the car that has some Bondo that just needs a little extra coverage, that way when we get here tomorrow, we don't have to sand the full car. We got the booth on, our air is circulating. Basically what we're going to be painting is this front bumper because it's never been painted before and it's a darker color. We're going to paint this halo piece as well because it's never been painted and it's black. Are we painting the hood too? Everything yeah. Is black as well for okay, so everything that is black essentially, including the carbon fiber hood and any areas that you know have a little bit of repair on them, we'll dust a little bit over there. So in that area, maybe we'll dust a little there, maybe a little bit right here. some primer again just trying to get the car more of a uniform color and by not spraying the entire car with primer we now don't have to come in here and buff an entire car tomorrow we're really just getting the places that really really need it we're going to be spraying these as well i'm probably gonna wash him first and then jump in there after i need to get suited up insert sexy music no ah! no we're getting ready for battle Zip it up to zip it up to the little cone head. Look at her little cone head. Look at that cone head. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that cone head. So to clarify, we're actually tonight we're spraying some gray primer, not the white. Just to hit those really, really dark spots so that tomorrow when we come in with the white, we're not putting the white directly over black. We're putting now the white tomorrow. So we're gonna make everything just look more uniform. Gray is going to pick up the white easier than the black was.
Okay. in the next one. 